Radio Retro Future. Oh, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the third episode of the Steampunk Beginner's Guide. I'm Denkert Lexicon. In today's episode, we'll discuss the visual genre that steampunk is known for today. What is it? And more importantly, what inspired it? Interest in steampunk waned in the 90s, but popular movies like Wild Wild West and the growth of the internet and geek culture at large reinvigorated the interest in old science fiction classics. Around 2009 it exploded and has grown to new heights ever since. I remember articles from 2011 lambasting the genre, claiming it was just a fad. But strangely enough, it's hard to find such articles anymore. Still, we see new attractions, cafes, short films and conventions completely inspired by steampunk. In this episode of the Steampunk Beginner's Guide, we will talk about how these early stories inspired a whole new visual genre we now know as steampunk. Starting around 2010, when steampunk exploded on the convention scene, there were no popular steampunk franchises. Well, now, for that matter. Arguably, there's Corvo from Dishonored and the cast of The Order, but video game characters like these are rarely adopted by cosplayers, let alone steampunks. So, steampunks created original characters instead. It's all about customization! Making something your own by adding something to an object that makes it uniquely yours. Steampunks prefer to leave the recreation of known characters to the cosplayers while they create original characters. But no matter your skill set and resources, only a lack of creativity can get in the way of telling a good story. As a result, the aesthetic became very diverse. Just like the novels, steampunks want to create their own worlds and stories, or twisting existing franchises and histories rather than reenacting it. Reinvention is the name of the game, taking history in new, sometimes more desirable directions. Also, finding new applications for archaic technology is the thing that makes steampunk stand out from all those other costumed cultures. But more on that on another video. This creative aspect has affected the designs of steampunk immensely, but it's also why the style is so hard to define. There are some great artists that make truly epic creations, but steampunk design can also be achieved with an old typewriter, some gears and brass paint. This is the reason steampunk is either compared to a master craftsman or lowest common denominators who just glue some gears on it. It's a nice idea that a visual style can be a democracy, but the so-called purists and critics of steampunk are not wrong when they say that steampunk as a visual genre is a bit of an unresolvable mess at this point. It doesn't help that the community has the tendency to call everything they like steampunk, including things that were made long before anyone even heard of the name, like the movie Wild Wild West or anything drawn in the 19th century. That's why I, unlike minded people say, no it isn't steampunk, these older things are what inspired it. But no matter what you think on the subject, we see similar designs pop up everywhere since the early 2000s. After 2010, its popularity exploded on the internet and on conventions and is now considered to be a staple of geek culture. We see it in video games, movies and amusement parks. But why? In general, the aesthetic of steampunk is retro-futuristic, meaning it combines futuristic with historical elements. In this case, the artist takes a modern device and tweaks it with historical styles and elements relevant to his or her own interests. The aesthetic then combines futuristic devices or function with historical elements, or vice versa. Usually these objects contain 18th century western styles, but designs from other periods and cultures can also be discovered. Another source of inspiration that is not so often talked about, but always present, is current pop culture. 
But no matter where the inspiration comes from, there is always a callback to early science fiction novels and movies. Often bulky and impractical with a lot of decaying moving parts. However, more minimalistic designs from the expressionist movies of 1920s Germany also inspired the current movement. Especially Metropolis by Fritz Lang became very influential and would inspire science fiction fans all over the world. Being the muse of people like George Lucas and Asomu Tezuka. We also find their influence again in steampunk. But if steampunk takes so much from traditional science fiction and fantasy, what makes the style so unique? One of the key words here is timelessness. A design that takes the best elements out of its past and present and combines these into something of beauty that never expires. Nostalgia is a very important factor, but good steampunk, at least in my mind, is original enough to feel fresh despite being assembled from various sources and parts that don't belong together. Apart from steampunk, there are plenty of anachronistic styles out there. So why is steampunk so popular with the mainstream? Probably because it's recognizable. Imagine looking at a random scene of Lord of the Rings, but you don't know the books, you haven't seen the movies, and you just ain't into fantasy in general. Do you think it would attract your attention? Well, at least the swords are pretty, right? Now let's take a random steampunk scenario like the Abe Lincoln meme with a Gatling arm and let's add Teddy Roosevelt with a jetpack and a mechanical teddy bear. Now try to think what elements of this image would appeal to the different types of people. I bet you can think of a lot. Even if you don't know who any of these men are, there are plenty of other things to enjoy about it. Apart from the historical references, the aesthetic that steampunk is known for has always been part of the mainstream. Wells and Verne were very well known in their own day, and movies like Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and 20,000 Miles Under the Sea already used it in the 1950s. However, steampunks took that concept and made it their own, and now there are a number of steampunk inspired TV series in the works. With World of Steam, for example, being taken on by Jim Henderson Productions and Steven Spielberg's expected series Lumen. Although, in all honesty, nobody has heard anything about it since 2014. No matter, I wouldn't be surprised if the mainstream takes steampunk back. No matter what the future holds though, steampunks make this style a part of their identity and will keep making this style their own style tribe that influence mainstream's perception of that style for better or for worse. Steampunk didn't just take inspiration from pop culture, they punked it in a completely new way, taking pop culture icons into completely different directions by reimagining them in different periods with the technology and fashion sense of that era at their disposal. However, steampunk also took a lot of inspiration from subcultures that came before. Cosplay culture in general has a very strong DUI tradition. Before the advent of the internet, there were very few ways to get movie prop replicas after all. Then were the youth cultures like the spiked leather jackets of the first punks inspired much of the apocalyptic themes we now associate with Mad Max. The neo-Victorian look they shared with the goths and the new wave. And the iconic goggles may have been introduced by cyber goths, but these could also have been inspired by aviation goggles. Probably both. So, what draws these people to steampunk rather than other expressions of fandom and geek culture? More on that next time on the Steampunk Beginner's Guide. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like. And of course, subscribe to Radio Retro Future for more anachronistic content. And as always, make it your way.